This presentation will talk about Clark's three laws of prediction. My name is Sydney Boone and I will be presenting. This presentation is brought to you by the members of Team Oz, Stephen Tomlinson, Ayush Bawija, and Sydney Boone. Arthur C. Clark was born on December 16, 1917, in England. He passed away on March 19, 2008. Clark was a well-known science fiction author and scientist. He was best known for 2001 A Space Odyssey, which was the basis for the film. Arthur Clark was both an inspired author and a source of inspiration for others. Other known works by Clark are Astounding in Science Fiction, Loophole, and Rescue Party. Some of his books were also adapted to screenplay. In a poll of futurists for the Encyclopedia of the Future, Clark was ranked sixth of the hundred most influential futurists in history, ahead of Jules Verne and Isaac Newton. Described as a prophet for the space age for his inspiring stories and meticulous scientific perspective, Clark was one of very few science fiction writers equally gifted on both the science side and the fiction side of the genre. His apartment eventually became headquarters to the British Interplanetary Society, with Clark becoming its chairman in 1949. He even served as a radar specialist in the RAF during World War II. Clark also introduced the concept that geostationary satellites could make excellent telecommunications relays. So influential was this work that Clark is credited as the inventor of the first communication satellite, a scientific development which earned him the gold medal of the Franklin Institute, the Lindenberg Award, and many others. Clark was also knighted by Queen Elizabeth II in 1998. His many predictions culminated in 1958 when he began a series of magazine essays that eventually became Profiles of the Future, published in book form in 1962. A timetable up to the year 2100 describes inventions and ideas including such things as a global library for 2005. The same work also contained Clark's first law and text that became Clark's three laws in later editions. The first picture you see is of Arthur C. Clarke during his early writing career, when he first saw the Apollo moon landing. The second picture is Clarke and his pet Tyrannosaurus Rex during 2003. Clarke coined three laws dealing with prediction, two from his 1962 essay, Hazards of Prophecy, The Failure of Imagination, and a third from his 1973 essay, Profiles of the Future. He was quoted to say, As three laws were good enough for Newton, I have modestly decided to stop there. Of the three, the third law is the best known and most widely cited. The first law, when a distinguished but elderly scientist states that something is possible, he is almost certainly right. When he states that something is impossible, he is very probably wrong. People have been stubborn about what is technically possible or impossible and have been proved completely wrong. Clark put this into two classes, failures of nerve and failures of imagination. Failure of nerve occurs when even given all of the relevant facts, the would-be prophet cannot see that they point to an inescapable conclusion. This is evident in cases like when the first locomotives were built. Critics claim that anyone who went 30 miles an hour would be suffocated. People also believe that Thomas Edison's light bulb was an unfathomable invention and would never work. Scientists also declared that heavier-than-air flight was impossible and that anyone who attempted to build airplanes was a fool. Even though all of the basic facts of flight were available, it was still thought of as impossible because people lacked the courage to test those facts. The second failure is the failure of imagination, which arises when all of the available facts are appreciated and marshaled correctly, but when the really vital facts are still undiscovered and the possibility of their existence is not admitted. This was shown when Auguste Comte declared that the stars would never be more than celestial reference points and only knowledge of the planets could be definite and even that was limited. This was proven wrong with the invention of the spectroscope. Clark's second law, the only way of discovering the limits of the possible is to venture a little past them into the impossible. It was widely believed once that the world was flat. But they were proved wrong when Christopher Columbus sailed across the sea and discovered different parts of the world. 
Without world exploration, the people would have remained ignorant. The only way to broaden people's understanding is to go above and beyond and push the limits to see what is possible. The Wright brothers' example can also be used to explain Clark's second law. Critics believed heavier-than-air flight was impossible, but the Wright brothers pushed the social norms to prove that it was possible. Before big advancements in technology, many people died of organ failure. Dr. Joseph Murray performed the first successful transplant of a human organ. This has led to organ donors and hundreds of lives being saved every year. People also believed it would be impossible to go to the moon until Neil Armstrong pushed the limits of the impossible and proved them wrong. Clark's third law, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. If someone went back to the 1800s and showed them a cell phone, they would say it was sorcery. Without any concept of electricity, people in this time would not be able to comprehend the abilities of a cell phone. But there are also examples that are still relevant today, without having to time travel. A computer programmer who writes lines and lines of code can show a non-tech savvy person what they wrote and that person will have no idea what the code is doing. When the program executes, that non-tech savvy person might think it was magic. What is technology to me could be magic to someone else. Clark's third law codifies perhaps the most significant of Clark's unique contributions to speculative fiction. A model to other writers of hard science fiction, Clark postulates advanced technologies without resorting to flawed engineering concept, concepts, as Jules Verne sometimes did, or explanations grounded in incorrect science or engineering, a hallmark of bad science fiction, or taking cues from trends in research and engineering, which date some of Larry Neven's novels. Accordingly, the powers of any future superintelligence or hyperintelligence, which Clark often described, would seem astonishing. It can be said that the third law is natural because magic is a wish of human, and the science and technology develops to achieve it. Clark's third law explains the source of our amazement as our limitations, rather than the impossibility of the technology. Despite Clark's statement that three laws were sufficient, in his 1999 revision of Profiles of the Future, Clark added his fourth law. For every expert, there is an equal and opposite expert. This is similar to Gibson's law, which holds that for every PhD, there is an equal and opposite PhD. This law goes to show that for every person out there that is so sure something will not work or is not possible, there is someone else able to prove them wrong.